Up next on Taste Texas, sometimes you have to throw the rules out the window. It's breakfast for dinner. And we'll need honey, so Chef Garth and I head out to Desert Creek Honey to see how it's made locally. And a new way to use pork tenderloin for a sandwich. Pull up a chair and join us at the table for today's Taste Texas. Kushner. And I'm Garth Blackburn. What are we gonna make today? We're gonna make some breakfast for dinner. Oh, that sounds awesome. Isn't that great for yeah. a weeknight? I think that's, it's so easy. Everybody, I don't know, on Sundays or Saturdays, it gets so crazy. So having a big brunch for dinner I is a I think a lot go. of people do that. I mean, do y'all make breakfast for dinner? That's kind of a common thing, you aren't? You get tired of the same old, so we're like, hmm, what twist to that? Make breakfast for dinner. We are. I can't so, wait to see the way you're gonna put it together. And you're gonna help me out. So we're gonna uh, get started with a custard and the custard base is gonna be used for anything that you want. As long okay. as you can remember the ratio mm -hmm. that we're gonna use, then you're set to cook pretty much anything with it. We're gonna make it sweet for okay. our French toast. We've got nice. some French bread that we already cut. Uh -huh. Leaving it out is just fine because it can dry up a little bit, which will allow it to absorb more custard. Okay. So Perfect. why don't you go ahead and crack, uh, crack oh. an egg in there? Okay, well, the way I do it, I'll, I'll tell you later. You can drop the show in here. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Everybody does it different. So Amy right. cracks it on the a side of the towel. bowl. No, I do it on a really, paper oh, towel. It's my preference. On yeah. a countertop? Uh-huh. Okay, same thing. So I always do it on the counter. That keeps the shell from going into the egg. So you're less likely to shell in the egg. Oops. Or on the ground. <laughs> so if you just crack it right on a flat surface like that, then you're not going to shove Makes that shell into so the Makes it look so easy, egg. right? <laughs> the paper towel trick really works, though. It does. Yeah. Or work at Denny's like I did for 15 <laughs> years. Did you really? No. <laughs> I believed you. All right, so this is going to be some milking. You can either use cream, half and half, or milk. I wouldn't use anything less than 2% milk. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put some brown sugar in there. This is gonna be interesting. Wow. A little bit of cinnamon. And now you're gonna blend that. Rather Good. than trying to whisk it, or try and use a fork, you're gonna break it down a lot faster if you go ahead and okay. use that stick blender. This is like your favorite kitchen gadget. It is. I'll turn down the speed a little bit. <laughs> yeah, please do. So you can lift it up some, but don't let it come out of the liquid. Common sense on what would happen with that. And that's We better hold this thing or it's going to go flying. Probably all you need. Okay, that's probably that good? good right there. Okay. Yep. So we can just break hey, that off. Hey, I'm getting better at it. You are. The first show, Amy. Uh, we had green avocado stuff going all over did. the place. So you got to learn. You, like, you have to practice on that thing because it's tricky. Okay, so we're going to put, uh, put that in. That's going to be our custard base. All right. And we're going to go ahead and put that bread in. Oh, this is... Okay, I was just going to use my hands. You can use your we'll hands. Be, we'll be but that's more about for it. the flipping. Okay. And we'll let that soak. The key here is to make sure that the custard goes all the way through to the center. And you can cheat on that. So what we'll usually do, and I'll flip it right now so that lets the custard start to absorb from the top and the bottom. Okay. Is you want to tear into it right by the crust because that's going to be the driest part. Mm -hmm. And if you see actual bread that doesn't have custard in it, then you're going to want to let it sit for a little bit longer or even press on it some. Oh man, that's awesome. I love that idea. Okay, and so what we're gonna be doing in addition to that, that's the sweet part. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use some of Blake's Desert Creek honey in a second. But we're also gonna do a breakfast nacho. And I like to fry my own chips, as you know, they're a lot fresher. Yeah, it makes a huge difference to it do it yourself. It does, and yeah. I like to use those thick ones. I mean, I like thin chips when I'm eating chips and salsa, one of your right. favorite food groups. But My very favorite. When, uh, when I'm frying at home, I want something sturdy, because I'm gonna be putting eggs and pico de gallo and avocado. So you need and a hearty chip. Cheese. We need a hearty something chip. Something that'll really hold all those ingredients. Right, and I've talked about this before. I think a lot of mm -hmm. folks aren't really sure about frying. I don't want to heat a whole bunch of oil up, which means that I can't really check the temperature of the oil. Here's how I check the temp. Just put a wooden utensil mm -hmm. into the hot oil and I'm gonna leave it in there. And you see now the bubbles are barely starting to come up. Right. I'm gonna turn the heat up higher. I want that to start bubbling within three seconds. Uh -huh. And that means it's gonna be about 350 degrees. So I can get a, a quick sear. So three seconds to make sure it's at 350 degrees. Exactly right. So that's, uh, that's a nice little shortcut. Yeah. Okay, we're also going to be 
using a little bit of Blake's Desert Creek honey, we want to infuse it. So if you squeeze some of that into this little pot here. This little baby pot? That little baby pot. Okay. How much did you want? Just keep going. So I can okay. use this. I'm going to make this now. That's going to hold good in my refrigerator for easily two to three months. So I really? think that if we're going to do it once, let's just go all the way with it. Make a, a larger portion. Right. Okay. I need two hands here. Okay. You want all of this? I do. There you go. I think we're at the end. <laughs> now you're just doing uh, that for fun. One more. Okay. It's empty, Garth. It is empty. <laughs> so I've got a vanilla bean pod. If you don't have um, maybe a fresh one, mm -hmm. I like to save all my empties. So if you have scraped it out to use for some of your favorite baked goods, mm -hmm. then go ahead and just put that, that outer shell in there, the pod itself. If you have a fresh one, we'll go I ahead and use that. I love using fresh vanilla. And I'll save this half for later. We'll turn that over uh, on low heat, leave that on for about 20 minutes. We'll infuse that flavor in. Perfect. Okay, well, we're going to have more good stuff. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. love the sounds of that and Gar's got some really great stuff going on here but first we want to send you to a wonderful place that we got to visit recently it's called Desert Creek Honey y'all take a look all right we're here at Desert Creek Honey with Blake Blake it's good to see you so we're in the heart of production uh, the end of the heart of production. Tell me what's going on. What's happening the, the whole process right now? Sure, so we're harvesting honey. We're get, taking the honeycombs. We took the honey away from the bees already, so we've already stolen the honey. Now we're in here in the honey house and we're getting the honey out of the honeycomb so that we can then package it and put it in the jars. Obviously, you didn't start with this incredible piece of machinery. Oh, no, no. I started beekeeping when I was about 12 years old. I started as a hobby, you know, I had one beehive, lots of enthusiasm, and I did beekeeping through high school, really as a hobby more than anything else. And then uh, when I got out of high school, I had two or 300 beehives, and I thought maybe I'll try to do this for a living. And so I uh, started getting more and more beehives, and by the time I was fully graduated with high school, I had a full-time business. Most honey you get in the grocery store has been blended, so it's a uniform color, uniform flavor. We don't really do that. It's just straight from the beehive into the jar, that's how we do it. Okay, so not only do you not blend or mix, there are a couple other things you don't do. Namely, you don't pasteurize, which right. is what first attracted me to your honey. Right, right. Why is that? Because I know that all the big grocery store uh, right. versions do, right. right? Yeah, most honey in big grocery stores has been filtered and pasteurized. Basically, what they're trying to do is remove any particles from it and heat it so that it never sugars or turns to a more of a granular form. And they do that to extend the shelf life. But in doing so, it removes most of the pollens and most of the nutrients out of the honey. So we don't heat it to a temperature that would hurt it, and we don't filter it like most people do, so that all the natural pollens are still left in the honey. Okay, so we love Blake, and we love his product, and we've obviously got a whole bunch right there in that pot. What are we gonna do with that? That's gonna infuse a flavor, and so instead of syrup, mm -hmm. we're gonna use that for our French toast. And since Blake does that, everything's low temp, he's not pasteurizing at high temp, mm -hmm. I don't want to take this up to a boil because then I'm going to lose a lot of the nutrients, a lot of the, the benefits to, okay. uh, to having his honey particularly. Right. And then you can't have breakfast without or bacon. any meal without bacon in my mind. Any meal, really? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. So this is a Texas pecan wood smoked bacon. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and fire this in the oven. Have you ever cooked bacon on the stovetop? I just wondered. Or like in the microwave? Because you always put it in the oven. <laughs> no, not the microwave. I think that was a taboo word. <laughs> I didn't was respond. That bad? <laughs> if you don't you have, have anything to say, how does the rest face? of the saying go? What? If you don't have anything good to say, don't then, say it okay, at all. Okay, so anyhow, not the so. microwave. <laughs> the skillet will produce an okay piece of bacon. It's going to splatter everywhere. True. Whoever's doing the cleanup, if you're doing the cooking, will yeah, not <laughs> be so fond of it. And it really, it, it starts to shrink and it gets cooked very unevenly. So yeah. that's the reason I'm going to steer clear. You're of it. always putting it in the oven. I just wondered. Uh, yeah, I can, I can cook a lot of it. I could do five trays at one time. Oh, right, I right see. Now. All right. So let's take a look at our, our oil temp. Right. 
So now one, two, three. Okay, it's bubbling in about four seconds. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit higher. Right. While that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of our Texas pecans. Mm -hmm. That's going in the honey. So this is gonna be, it's almost becoming like a sauce with all that flavor. Right. Without having to make a true caramel sauce. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's and really right now nice what we're gonna thick. do is start searing that French toast. Nice, all right, I'm ready. Okay, so you, you can use butter, but if you're doing multiple batches, oil mm -hmm. is going to not burn. Mm -hmm. So w when you're putting the oil in, now I can do several batches at one time and not worry about okay. trying to and switch it out. And is this the grape seed again? again? Really, again you're really into that. It's real neutral. Okay. So as I would mentioned to you guys before, I wanna check the bread and make sure the custard goes all the way into the center it's of the bread. It's really spongy. If not, you're basically having bread with custard on the outside. Okay. So go ahead and drop make those sure into nice that oil. Soaked. Okay. Oh, here are the mm, sizzle. Sizzle. Okay. Are y'all ready for breakfast for dinner? Oh. And a little hot oil as well. Yeah. On the outside of the pan too. Okay. So we're just gonna sear this. We're gonna flip it over in about wow. one minute, and then we're gonna pull it off on a sheet tray to finish in the oven. Oh, back to the oven. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna finish that up right when we come back. Get them off. We flipped them. Time to get them off of there. Okay. Just okay, so at this point, the custard is not cooked all the way through. Uh -huh. That's what makes this so great for knocking out some early prep work mm -hmm. and then finishing it off right before we're ready to serve. So okay. it's still a wet center. It's going to take about 10 minutes in the oven mm -hmm. to finish cooking at 325 degrees. You could put a whole bunch on that tray. You could have put a whole bunch on that tray. I think we need to make a bunch of extra because everybody here is going to want a bite. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> okay, if you notice, there's very few bubbles coming up. That's because I've been using this exact same wooden utensil multiple times. Uh -huh. This one still has more moisture in it. Mm -hmm. You see how it started to bubble a lot faster? Right. Within three seconds. So we're ready to go ahead and crisp this so up. So do you need to switch out the utensils, the wooden you do. utensils? If you okay. keep trying it, because it's absorbing moisture in the air. Oh, I see. All right, so we're going to let those fry. We're going to put together some pico de gallo. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. And All right. homemade chips. Start with the uh, jalapeno, where I cut off the bottom so it doesn't roll. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna cut the outside and cut that across. So you don't want any of the seeds? Uh, you, you like it a little bit more spicy than I think a, a lot of folks do. Just a little bit, but it's okay. We, we'll go ahead we and use a little bit off the bottom. So I'll leave them out for y'all. All right, I've already chopped up a little bit of, I like sweet onion for this, so a little bit of sweet onion. Uh -huh. Got some cilantro. Yes, you've got to have cilantro. I tear off the top, roll that really tight. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing with my parsley. And that way it doesn't take nearly as many cuts. Give it a nice chop. Go across again. Mm -hmm. A little bit of garlic. Yes, you've got to have yes. fresh garlic. Some tomatoes, and I like this to be pretty chunky. So I'm gonna either have or quarter these. Mm -hmm. Always use a serrated knife. And you do your fancy trick with sliding across. Did, right. did y'all see that? Yes. Do they, not do laughing. that after the they're second or third glass of wine. They're imagining the catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't drink wine while you do that. Not at all. <laughs> see, Garth has got what 10, 20 years behind you that you've got mastered few. this skill. But that still works for you all <laughs> as long as you're as long as you're sober. And then as far as getting the tomatoes off the cutting board, rather than scooping them up. I slide them off the edge of the countertop, mm -hmm. put the bowl underneath the cutting board, and they all slide right in. Now you're not trying to scrape it all up or dirtying other utensils. All right, I think these are ready. Yeah, awesome. Is there a particular kind of tortilla that you want to use on those? I don't want to use the, the really thick, like home style ones mm -hmm. that, um, they just won't fry. The cinders are gonna be really hard. And um, not or I'm sorry, really chewy. And you need corn, obviously. You need corn, uh -huh. and you want to hit salt on as soon as you pull it out, because that grease is going to allow it to absorb. Oh my gosh. That okay, so at so this good. point, this is our pico. Mm -hmm. Got to add a little bit of lime juice to it. Yeah, you got to have a little lime juice. No avo in there, right? 
No, we're going to use that as the garnish in the top when we go to plate it oh, up. Now we're thinking, okay. Right? So if you'll just toss that around for me. Sure. I'll hit with some salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. And any kind of salt is fine. I use kosher salt. Kosher salt, if y'all are thinking there's a lot of salt in this, kosher salt actually has half the sodium by volume that table salt has. So as you're sprinkling it in, it looks like a lot. It's just mm -hmm. that it's easier to sprinkle more consistently across all of your food. And so Man, I find it to be so just more consistent good. product. That is so fresh. All right, and then I know you and I both are not big fans of eggs, but we're gonna cover up these eggs. We need eggs. to preface that. It's scrambled eggs. I see, I'm not. It's, do you like scrambled eggs? I'm okay on scrambled eggs, as long as there's plenty of cheese and pico and avocado it's a, it's and cotilla cheese. And it's, I don't mind like other kinds, but it's a texture. So are you making scrambled eggs? Is that what we're doing I'm gonna next? make a scrambled egg. A scrambled <laughs> egg. And we're this gonna divide is, it amongst the, everybody the here. The token <laughs> scrambled egg. All right, I put quite a bit of salt in early. That's gonna break down the, the egg white, tile. so it's not all stringy. Okay. The other thing that's gonna help it taste delicious is a little bit of that milking, either cream or milk. Right. Small amount of that. Whisk that up, and I wanna let it sit for a few minutes. That's going to allow the salt to break down the egg white so it doesn't become stringy. Well, that's what you do, huh? That's what you do. Interesting. And then all we're gonna do is scramble that egg. Okay. We're gonna pull the French toast and the bacon out of the oven. We're gonna assemble it, and I'll be ready at the exact minute okay. that you're ready to eat. That's the plan, so we'll be right back with all that good stuff. All right, here we are back in one of my favorite places, the Sub-Zero and Wolf Prep Kitchen. I've got a quick, easy weeknight sandwich idea for you. It's gonna be my Texified version of a crispy pork tenderloin sandwich. I think you'll be really impressed. So let's get started. When you buy it, either the butcher shop or already packaged, it's gonna have this white silver skin on it. You wanna make sure to trim that off. Cut that along the outside. That's now removed. I'm gonna cut it into three medallions for our three little sliders. I'm going to cut it at an angle so they'll be a little bit larger than just that really small cross cut. Okay, and to get the crispy part, we need to dredge it. So what I'm going to do for the dredging is a plastic bag, a little bit of flour. If you're wanting to go gluten free, an option here would be to use rice flour instead of the regular and you could skip the panko breadcrumbs that I'm about to put in. To this, we're gonna add some garlic powder, some chili powder, and a little bit of smoked paprika for that depth of flavor that makes it so delicious. Okay, now the salt and pepper, I can put a little bit in the flour, but I really wanna make sure I get that pork seasoned. So I've got my three medallions here. I'll save the rest of that pork for another use. Salt, freshly cracked pepper, Turn those over, hit them with salt and pepper again. Mix up our, our dredging, put these in. And now I wanna press them flat. That makes them quick to cook. We won't have to toss them in the oven. We'll just do them straight in a pan or on your favorite griddle. And they'll be fast and easy and delicious. I'm going to cut some of my peppers. These are Hatch chili peppers. These are those orange sweet peppers, some red sweet pepper, and then a sweet yellow onion. I'm gonna use about a quarter of an onion for that. So I've got my pork ready to go. I've got my vegetables cut. I've got my rolls cut in half, and now we're gonna head over to the griddle and get this all seared off. Okay, we're ready to sear. I'm a little biased. I'm of course cooking on a wolf griddle, but use your own if you don't have a wolf griddle yet. I've got mine set to 400 degrees, which will make for a, a fast sear, a crispy crust on that pork, which is really what I'm looking for. So these won't take quite as long as the pork will. We'll just pull them off when they're ready. Okay, we've got some vegetables that are deliciously caramelized. My pork's crunchy on the outside and just about cooked through in the center. So in the last minute, I'm just gonna toss some fresh spinach down. Our spinach is wilted but not overcooked. Our vegetables are caramelized. Okay, and here's our finished product. 
Colorful, delicious, crunchy, salty, a little spicy, great combination. And there you have the Texified Pork Tenderloin Sandwich ready in just a few minutes. Y'all enjoy, I'm about to. Time to plate it all up. We're gonna start by pulling out our bacon from the oven. Mm -hmm. That looks delicious, yeah. splatter free, right. ready to serve. Clean up easy. We've got our Get French it. toast. Perfectly cooked, custard all the way cooked through. You're gonna go ahead and lay these out by putting a piece of French toast mm -hmm. and then a little bit of full Quiver Farms strawberry cream cheese. Do you want me to put more on here? And you'll lay it out like that. Oh, okay. You're gonna. Right. You're like, okay. Is that what I keep doing? <laughs> is that my job? Yeah. That is your job. All right, I can do that. In the meanwhile, you've got this one little bitty egg over here that I I don't know what you're gonna do with that. Quick scramble. Again, I'm not a huge egg fan. I like all these other ingredients to really shine. Mm -hmm. And we're just doing two tostadas here. I'm putting in some milking white cheddar cheese. Right. I like to use more cheddar than egg. Well, that's going to help change the texture, too. It will. It makes it nice and creamy. That's wow, my base. Wow, I'm loving this. This looks like whipped cream cheese. Is that what you said that was? It is. It is. Really good. <clears throat> this really is that fresh pico de gallo with some Texas tomatoes. There's the pico that we made. And how about you drizzle a little bit of that desert this creek honey? honey? Oh, my gosh. So this was basically like a homemade syrup, if you will. It is, without oh all the additives goodness. and all the other junk. Oh, watch that. Hello. Is that not gorgeous? Oh, breakfast for dinner is sounding amazing. And Amy, back over here, I put a little bit of cotija cheese, some Texas cotija, avocado, and some micro bull's blood, oh, which is beets, awesome. along with cilantro. So we've this got our sweet, we've got our savory, and then uh, How's that? at my house, I don't even serve the, the bacon to the kids. That's, you don't? That's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You little stench. That looks amazing. I okay, I, we've got to grab forks and dig in. But first, I want to tell everybody that you can download these recipes that we saw and we made here today on our website, and that's TasteTexasTV.com. TasteTexasTV.com. And then we're also on all social medias, which is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Taste Texas TV as well. So thanks y'all for joining us today. Everybody's gonna get a little bite now. Breakfast for dinner, how's that sound? <laughs> All right. <laughs>